All right, so our last speaker for this session is Carson Kent from Stanford University. Uh, his field is computational and mechanical engineering, and his, his advisor is Jose Blanchett. And he did his practicum at Argonne National Laboratory in 2017. Hi, so I'll be talking today about um, optimization in the space of measures, um, or optimal transport, um, which is the main subject of my uh, thesis. It's a relatively new field, both in mathematics and then in kind of applied mathematics and uh, optimization. Uh, and there's just um, uh, a lot of recent applications that I'm really excited about. Um, so uh, just brief overview, because there's a, a couple different topics in this talk. Um, uh, so we'll talk about optimal transport initially. Um, uh, it's not uh, super canonical or common yet, so we'll go over some of the basics, uh, review some computational advances, <clears throat> talk about some re recent progress we've made um, and why there's still hope for improvement beyond that progress. Uh, and then we'll talk about robust stochastic optimization, and there's a nice connection there um, with uh, my practicum and how it actually inspired um, some new research uh, in distributionally robust uh, optimization. Um, and then we'll talk about um, uh, where to go from, from here. And this is joint work with um, my advisor, Jose Blanchett, um, uh, Aaron Sidford, who's also at Stanford, uh, Rodu Wang, who's at Waterloo, and, and a bunch of other people. So, uh, optimal transport is actually quite old. It dates back uh, to Munge, um, and he had probably the most elegant way of describing it in a sentence, which is just moving Earth from one place to another. Another way to describe it in pictures, though, is you've got two distributions here, mu and uh, nu, and you'd like to move the mass of nu into mu. Um, so uh, you've got a shovel there and you'd like to move from, from y to x or from x to, to uh, t of x. And you, really the problem Munge considered was computing t of x. What is this map that gives us an optimal way, way to move from mu to nu? Um, so mathematically speaking, uh, you assume you have two probability distributions, and uh, there's some technical regularity assumptions here, but let's just say um, uh, there are almost any probability distribution you would want to consider. We've got a sensible transportation cost, um, so what that means is uh, it's lower semi-continuous, but uh, you, you don't want to relax that assumption anymore, so that's pretty reasonable. And then you want to compute this optimal map here. So the map from x to y that minimizes this integral, minimizes the average cost. Uh, and, and here just uh, the restriction, what makes this problem non-trivial, right, is that the push forward of, of mu under this map has to be equal to nu, the nu distribution. Um, now, had Munge had the benefit of 300 years of functional analysis back in uh, 1781, he might have actually come up with a, a better formulation of this problem. But unfortunately, he didn't. And it took mathematicians about 250 years to figure out what a slightly better formulation of the problem was. And it was to remove the dependence on this map, T. Um, and um, so instead of considering a map, what we're going to consider computing is actually a joint distribution over the product space of, uh, of x and y. And uh, the reason why this is what you want to do is because the instant you do this, now you have a bunch of functional analysis you can apply. And it tells you that actually this minimum always exists. Uh, this functional is lower semi-continuous in the space of measures. Uh, and moreover, it's uh, lower semi-continuous on a compact space. And so we know we, have, we always have minimizers. And not only that, but it's really uh, linear programming uh, at that point. And you get a very elegant dual form formulation for this problem. So the dual is uh, just maximizing, of course, if the, the primal is in uh, the space of measures, the dual is in function space. And so it's just maximizing a pair of functions that have a, a point-wise restriction on them. There's a, a nice intuitive interpretation for what this dual is too, which is 
Um, if you were going to charge someone cost for picking up mass from a point X and then delivering it to a point Y, um, you want to maximize your profit and essentially you're solving this dual problem. You want, uh, you're increasing the profit to the point at which it is equally efficient for someone to move the mass themselves or to pay you to move the mass from X to Y. Um, when this cost here is a, is a power of a distance function, um, it turns out that um, this problem, uh, so the, the minimizer is actually a distance uh, or gives you a distance, the value gives you a distance. The, these are called Wasserstein distances and you may have heard of these before. Um, in the case where you just have uh, p equals one, uh, in fact, you get a lot of simplification and uh, uh, the dual is just maximizing over Lipschitz functions, essentially, of the integral of the, the difference between the two measures. And this is essentially the problem that uh, Wasserstein GAN solves. So if you've heard of that before, um, uh, essentially a Wasserstein GAN will replace phi here with the neural network and also replace this difference between distributions here um, with a difference between empirical measure and a neural network. So let's just build some intuition here for this problem. Let's talk about a toy example. So um, here we're just gonna continue, uh, consider one dimensional distributions and our cost is just the absolute value. Uh, and in this case, the, the transport is quite nice. Um, it's actually just uh, the transport that matches uh, quantiles. So you simply, uh, for instance, if you had x, you would simply compute the uh, cumulative distribution function at x and then take the inverse in terms of the cumulative distribution function of nu. Um, uh, this actually, this optimal transport holds for almost any cost you can think of for just one dimensional distributions. In fact, the condition you really need is submodularity. Um, but this uh, example really doesn't generalize, which is nice because otherwise an optimal transport would just be kind of trivial and we wouldn't expect it to give us much. Um, but here's just the picture of what's happening. So if these were your two distributions, um, the transport essentially, I'm showing it as an interpolation between the two distributions, but it would move uh, a point which is far in the tail of the, the distribution on the left to a point which is far in the tail of the distribution on the right. And this is just a plot um, of the cumulative distribution functions and actually the map you would get uh, in its inverse uh, uh, from this transport. So there's tons of applications for this. Um, obviously the, the first one was routing and assignment. Um, but uh, uh, the, the most popular application now probably is in uh, uh, image processing, so a lot of image matching, uh, image fusion, uh, shape registration, um, texture synthesis. Uh, market design is also fairly common. Uh, the the uh, exam, or the, uh, what I just told you about the dual essentially being a pricing problem. Uh, really allows people to uh, use optimal transport to price complex derivatives. Um, you also have embeddings, so you can play around with uh, these mappings uh, and uh, look at um, uh, what you get when one measure has a much higher dimension than the other measure, and you'll get an embedding. Um, they also use this to restore records, uh, do a lot of health uh, screening uh, and uh, drug discovery. Um, recently, there was a nice application in Bayesian inference as well, where you can use this to parallelize Bayesian inf inference, uh, which had never been done before. That's work from two or three years ago. Uh, and then you can also use optimal transport to do robust stochastic optimization, which is what I'll talk about in the second half of the talk. Uh, also, there's maybe five to six Nobel Prizes in fields medals associated with this. Um, so here's just uh, uh, a couple photogenic applications. So on the left here, we have the optimal transport between various shapes. Um, and on the right here, we have a uh, assignment problem uh, where the optimal transport, so you have the, the red dots 
show the distribution mu, and the blue dots show the distribution nu, uh, and then the, the lines just give you the, the transport between the two distributions. Oh, and finally, of course, a GAN, Wasserstein GAN is a, a great example. So these are synthetic faces. These were not generated by a person, but by a machine. Um, supposedly, they're not curated either, but uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that not every face or not the average face from a GAN looks like this. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so beyond one dimension, right, it's non-trivial to compute. Um, and actually, we still have an infinite dimensional problem. Um, and unlike certain other problems in uh, statistics where, uh, like if you impose moment conditions, for instance, like you have a, a linear functional like we do and you impose a moment condition, you know that uh, actually the optimizer of that will be finite dimensional. Unfortunately, you don't get that in this case. So we do discretize, and typically we discretize using the empirical margins. So uh, the idea here is we've just collected a lot of data. We have a pretty good idea of what nu and mu are. Uh, and now we just want to solve it, assuming that exactly our marginals are the, is the data that we've collected. Um, so uh, under these uh, 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 empirical marginal constraints, the problem now becomes actually an LP, which is nice. Um, but uh, it's not as straightforward to solve as you think, or it, uh, rather, it can be solved much more efficiently than a standard LP. Um, so, you know, once you see a problem of this form, the natural thing you might want to do as a computational scientist is just plug in an interior point method or plug in a, this, a simplex solver. And unfortunately, um, uh, while you can do that, and while it will work, um, as you start scaling up and getting to problems of real interest, uh, it's going to fail. Um, you, you, you'll find that the complexity of the method really is going to punish you. So um, in this case, our LP is basically on the order of n squared, our data set, the number of data points squared. Um, and of course, n in many applications kind of has this uh, uh, cursive dimensionality size. Um, and so at best, you're going to get a uh, uh, LP solver that'll give you like n to the 2.5 uh, times log of ep 1 over epsilon, where epsilon is some error that you would like. And unfortunately, you're actually going to do worse than this. That's actually only the theoretical best runtime. Uh, and if you, you apply a practical solver like uh, uh, Gorobi, for instance, you're going to do uh, far worse. So, but the nice thing about this problem is these constraints here are significantly better than a lot of constraints you would encounter for an average LP. Um, and in 2013, the key insight that allowed people to start solving these problems significantly faster was that um, you, could add, you could add entropy. Um, uh, so if you add entropy and take the dual, uh, you get uh, an algorithm which now has a much nicer runtime and is actually very practical to implement, and it only pays basically n squared amount of work, or it's linear in the input size, which is very nice. Unfortunately, you have this epsilon squared dependence, which is still kind of punishing, and you run into some numerical stability issues. So the question we wanted to answer was, can we do better? According to Feynman, there's always room at the bottom. Um, and so our idea was to exploit some, some deep connections between optimal transport and packing LPs and uh, what's called the matrix scaling problem, which is essentially a uh, slightly different version of the optimal transport problem. But the, the key intuition here is it allowed us to apply very specialized methods. Uh, we were able to do accelerated coordinate descent for the, uh, to solve the packing LP and a box-constrained Newton method to solve the matrix scale, scaling LP. And both of these techniques um, allowed us to beat previous runtimes. Um, so we ended up with an algorithm that now paid just an epsilon dependence. And more importantly, it was paralyzable and just has a uh, 1 over epsilon depth, which is very nice. So now we can scale this somewhat trivially. Um, this was actually a parallel discovery or uh, a simultaneous discovery, let's say, with uh, Kent. Um, 
and now uh, uh, this algorithm has been uh, extended to create a direct algorithm. Our, our algorithm was a little indirect. We ended up having to do a couple reductions to some, some canonical problems, but now we also have a direct algorithm for doing this with the same parallel complexity. Um, we got, uh, in this work, we actually got two different methods though, so the question is, um, the fact that we get the same running time from two different methods, is that a coincidence? And the answer is no. So uh, we also showed that if you do any better than our method, um, you're actually going to get a faster algorithm for a maximum cardinality bipartite matching. Um, and so beating that running time would be uh, highly surprising. So you could say this is a lower bound of sorts. Um, uh, but don't take this as a completely um, uh, uh, pessimistic view on the problem. There's a lot of costs out there that have a lot more structure. Um, and uh, there's been some recent work where you can exploit that structure to get even better run times. I don't have time for this part, unfortunately. But uh, basically, you can use optimal transport to solve uh, robust optimization problems, um, stochastic robust optimization problems. Uh, and uh, this gives you an, a lot of nice algorithms that generalize like Frank Wolf trust region uh, methods to, to infinite dimensions and also statistical estimation problems. Um, there's a lot of future di directions in this area. It's kind of a wild west out there right now for optimal transport and robust optimization. Um, and then I'd like to thank CSGF, of course, the staff at Krell, and you guys for making this uh, cohort so great.